Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. 
Amen. Thank God for you, the Lord's people. Amen. Amen. I thank God for Regeneration Temple. Amen. And I also honor for them that are online that can't be here with us. God bless you. Amen. We love you and we're looking forward to when we can all get together again. Yes, Amen. 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 Titus chapter 3. Everybody, I still see some pages turning. Amen. Amen. Titus chapter 3. And we're going to begin at the fourth verse. Amen. Those of you online, amen. If you want to be a blessing to us, you can give at Regeneration Temple, Regen Temple, which is our cash app, or online at regenerationtemple.com. Amen. All right, everybody should be there. All right, Titus chapter 3, verse 4 says, But after that, the kindness of and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration. Everybody say regeneration. Regeneration. And renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shared on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, bless us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to talk in this title, if you're writing, the title of this study tonight will be Regeneration Part 2. Amen. Um, this scripture tonight that we are speaking from is actually the ministry Scripture. This is what we founded our church, Regeneration Temple, upon is Titus 3 and 5. If you didn't know, most of you should already know that. But uh, if you didn't know, Titus 3, so she the only one I give a pass on it. Everybody else should know that. Titus 3 and 5. Amen. Amen. So Titus 3 and 5 is our ministry scripture. And tonight we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about Regeneration Part 2. The reason why I call it Regeneration Part 2, last night I was in Zebulun and got a chance to fellowship with Pastor Parker. And I got a chance to preach part one of it. So I'm going to preach part one and part two tonight if it's okay. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you're writing, I want you to start off with the statement here. And this was, is my thesis statement. Imperfection can never become perfection outside of the grace and power of the perfect one. Imperfection can never become perfection outside of the grace and power of the perfect one. Now this statement is going to make sense in a minute. Before COVID-19, there were plenty of discussions about religions and philosophies. There were plenty of discussions about race. There were plenty of discussions, conversations about who should have certain rights to do what. Where plenty of discussions about people tell your truth. Do y'all remember all of these conversations that we were having before COVID-19? It's amazing when pandemic comes, when virus comes, how we begin to realize what is really important. Amen. That I believe that many people have started to become more concerned about their soul versus worrying about what color a person's skin is or uh, what sex gets what, who has rights to do what. God has a way to direct our attention back to the things that are really important. Amen. We had senseless debates about unisex bathrooms. You couldn't go to certain places. They put unisex on it. You didn't know if it's okay to go in or not. We had conversations about abortion. Amen. We still should because they're still keeping the clinics open. My point is that we have been divided as a nation on almost every issue. Whether you be Democrat or Republican, we have been divided. But God has a way to make us look at the things that are really, really important. Somebody say amen. amen. See, what happens is we still are divided if in our freedom we are bound by the own error of our own judgment. Even though you may declare and profess to be 
profess to be free, if you are bound by your own judgment or bound by your own sin or blinded by the enemy, then you're still not free. I don't care Amen. what nation you're in, you're still bound. Amen. But Paul was saying, I'm wrestling because I want to do good, but evil is always present because as long as I'm in this body, I feel like I'm still bound. Trying to reach for the things that are right, but still being drawn to the things that are wrong. Mm -hmm. Whether or not we are red, or, or whether or not we are white, or blue, or green, or whether or not Jesus was white, or blue, or black, or brown, or whatever color he was, it does not change, hallelujah, what our belief is. It does not change the blood of Jesus. Amen. What's significant about Jesus is what he did. Yes. Amen. What's significant about Jesus is his sacrifice on the cross. Somebody say amen. amen. I wonder if we get to heaven and he don't look like what we thought he would look like, when, would we leave heaven? Would we go out and say, okay, now this ain't, this, this ain't my party. But see, what, what really is important is what he did on the cross. Yes, amen. I know before all of this happened, there were a lot of discussions about whose religion is right. Uh -huh. Whose God is right. Uh, is, uh, are we the original Jews and all of that? See, what the Bible, what God was trying to tell us is that you, we got to understand that God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son. Matter of fact, Paul said in Galatians 3 and 21, 28, he said, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Amen. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye all are one in Christ Jesus. Amen. The whole mystery of the gospel is the fact that God was trying to bring us together under the umbrella of his blood. Amen. Because his blood is the only thing that gives us access to the Father. Amen. Paul's message to the Jews and Gentiles in Rome. When, when he wrote the letter to Rome in Romans chapter 3 and 23, he says, we are all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. He didn't say just one person. He didn't say those individual people. Paul said we all have sinned amen. and fallen short of the glory of God. Somebody say amen. 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 The first example of falling short of the glory began in the book of Genesis mm -hmm. with Adam. When God had given them the opportunity to choose and to choose rightly. God said, I love you so much. And as a matter of fact, when God made Adam, he said, you are very good. Amen. Hallelujah. He made Adam and made Eve and told him that you are very good. Everything else, he said, you are good. Verse 31, he said, you are very good, which means God was excited by what he created. Adam was the capstone of creation. Yes. Yes, it was what God was so proud of by making us in his image. And God says, I love you so much that I'm also going to give, give you free choice. Because choice will dictate whether you love a person or not. Right. That's just like with women when, and they fall in love with inmates or men fall in love with women that are incarcerated. Yeah, it, it, it's one thing to say, I love you while I'm in prison. Uh -huh. Because on. I ain't got many options. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. But see, it's another thing to prove your love once you get out. That's why a lot of people get trapped because they're, they're hearing I, they love them, but they're incarcerated. They don't have choice. So God says, I'm going to give man choice because that's the only way I can know that you love me if you choose me above what you really, really desire. Hallelujah. And what God, what God's idea was to change our desire from his desire. Amen. God's intent for mankind from the beginning was to rule from heaven, but rule through man on the earth. Amen. That's why God established a covenant with us. When he said with Adam, he says, I love you. You are my people. You can have dominion. You can reign on the earth. I want you to be fruitful and multiply. But he says, I want you to eat from every tree but except this one. And anytime we go outside the wisdom of God and try to do our own thing, that's when we get in trouble. Right. We have reciprocated this down throughout history, even to our generation. We all know when we go outside of the wisdom of God and try to make it happen ourselves, that's when we get in trouble. Amen. 
Adam went outside the wisdom of Eve. They went outside the wisdom of God. And this severed the relationship between God and man. And so since this severed the relationship, there was disobedience. By their disobedience, death entered into the world. Amen. By their disobedience, the Bible says, by sin, death entered into the world. And it entered on all men, and all have sinned. Amen. Not only that, they, they, it says in, in, in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, hallelujah, the Bible says that the wages of sin are what? Death. death. And the gift of God is eternal life. So if we know that, we understand that this sin pervaded throughout the whole world. And because it did this, now we find ourselves in an issue of condemnation. Condemnation reigned upon all men. And tonight I'm talking about regeneration, just so you know. Uh, but condemnation reigned upon all men. Because of the first sin of Adam. But because of how God loved us, he kept trying to reconcile us to him. Amen. Remember throughout history, God got upset and said, man, he said, I, I repent that I even made them. And God destroyed the world by our blood. Amen. And then when Noah got off the boat in Genesis chapter 8, he lifted up his eyes. And then he made a sacrifice that was a sweet savor unto the Lord. And God promised to never destroy the world again by our blood. But then even so, God had to find his own people, and he selected Abraham and made a covenant with Abraham. And when he made this covenant with Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, he says, you shall be my people. I will bless you. I will multiply you. But still God, and still the people turn their backs on God. How many know sin separates a per person from God? Amen. Because God is holy, God is pure, and God is righteous. Therefore, God can have nothing to do with sin. Amen. He judges sin. Even in the book of Exodus, we saw Moses saying, all right, God. God told him, he said, I can no longer go with you people. Mm -hmm. Because if I go up with you, then I'm going to have to judge you. He says, you're a stiff-necked people. And because you're stiff-necked, I can't go with you. So God was saying, because I am holy, then I need holy people. And anytime you are acting unholy, I have to judge your unholiness. Yes. This is the wrath of God. And what I'm trying to show you is that all of us have to understand the whole message behind the gospel, the reason why we needed Jesus in the first place. Yes. Somebody say regeneration. Regeneration. Each one of us should be able to tell the gospel story. Because when we go out to witness, uh, you, you should be able to tell a person why they need Jesus in the first place. Amen. Because there are many other gods out there. There are many people that are proclaiming their own religion and all type of Scientology and all of this stuff. They are claiming that, but they don't, they don't have a Savior. We're the only one that have a Savior that went to the grave and got up. Amen. Nobody else can claim. And nobody else can claim that they have a Savior that got up with all power. In his hands. Amen. So what man, what man fails to see is that God is perfect. And as perfect, he cannot accept anything that's imperfect. Amen. So he's looking for people, hallelujah, that will believe in his son because his son was the only one that was perfect. Amen. See, condemnation, if you're right, condemnation means I'm sentenced to a particular punishment. Amen. Which means I'm sentenced to death. Hallelujah. Which means for them that don't believe in Jesus Christ, they are sentenced to death. Amen. That's condemnation. Amen. Believing is accepting the fact that God died, he went to the grave, and on the third day he got up and was resurrected with all power. And not only believing in that, but living in that. Amen. I'm living in power. I'm living in faith. I'm living in the fact that one day I will have eternal life. Amen. Do we believe that tonight? Yes. That you believe yes. that you have the eternal hope? Yes. Hallelujah. I wouldn't be in church if I didn't believe that we got the eternal hope. Yes. I wouldn't be coming to prayer if I didn't believe we have the eternal hope. Yes. I wouldn't be gathered together if I didn't believe we have the eternal hope. Let's, let's go to, I, I want to divert for a second, and I want to go to Revelation chapter 21. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 21. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Revelation chapter 21, and we're going to start at the first verse. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. John, who has this, uh, this vision mm -hmm. from God, the Bible says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. John says, I saw a new heaven, and I saw a new earth. Amen. He says, for the first heaven, which is this one, and the first earth were passed away. He says, in fact, there was still, there was no sea. He says, there was created a new heaven and a new earth, but there was no sea. Hallelujah. God says that, that there's going to be a new earth, which means that not only, and, and if we continue to look at verse 2, he says, and I, John, saw the holy city. Mm -hmm. The new Jerusalem, uh -huh. coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Yes. Now look at this. This tells us that the new heaven and the new earth was not created in the earth. That's right. But the new heaven, the Bible says, came down from where? It came down, the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Hallelujah. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Mm -hmm. Verse 3 says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Now those of us, those of you that have studied with us, we understand that God had gave Moses the vision and the instructions of the tabernacle in the earth. Amen. But the tabernacle was already created in heaven. Amen. When we read in Hebrews chapter 8, hallelujah, we read that there was a tabernacle already created in heaven that Jesus ascended up unto. Matter of fact, let's turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 8 since we're in Bible study. Amen. I can go a little slower tonight. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 8. The Bible says, and if you look at Hebrews chapter 8, verse 3, it says, For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have someone also to offer. Mm -hmm. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, uh -huh. who serve unto the example and the shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for, it says, see, see saith he, that thou make all things according to what? To the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Mm -hmm. All right? So it says, showed in the mountain, this was made in accordance to what God had showed him in the mountain. All right? Now let's look at chapter 9. And let's look at the 24th verse. Well, let's start at 23. The Bible says, It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. Notice the word patterns again. But the heavenly things, look at that, mm -hmm. heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Mm -hmm. So it's in comparison to the earthly sacrifice, the earthly tabernacle to the heavenly. Okay? He says, for Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands. That's Meaning right. Jesus didn't enter into the place that was here on earth because the high priests on earth, they entered into the holies of holies, but they had to make a sacrifice even for themselves. Amen. But Jesus was different. It says, which are the figures of the true, hallelujah, but into heaven itself. He says, when Jesus died on the cross and he rose and was resurrected, he ascended. When he ascended, he didn't go into an earthly tabernacle. He ascended up into heaven itself. It says, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Amen. So when Jesus went, remember there was already a tabernacle in the earth. There was already a tabernacle in heaven. 
Then Moses made one in the earth, and then Jesus ascended back to the tabernacle in heaven. Now, when we get to Revelation, the Bible says what? In verse 3, he said, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. Amen. That means the heavenly tabernacle will come down to the earth. And then it says, And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Isn't that good news? Yeah. God says it, it, that we, we will have a perfect place. There will be no sorrow. There will be no more aches and pains. There will be no more murder. There will be no guilt. There will be no shame. Hallelujah. There will be no more abuse, no bondage. Hallelujah. No worry. Because God says, I'm making a perfect place for my perfected people. Amen. Hallelujah. God said, this is, this is what I'm making, I'm creating for you. Don't y'all want to be that in that great day? Hallelujah. I'm going to scream and shout. I don't know about you. Hallelujah. I'm going to have a great time. Hallelujah. Verse 4 says, and God shall do what? Wipe away all tears from their eyes. Amen. God said, I'll wipe away all your frustrations. You won't have to worry about what you went through in your childhood. Hallelujah. Had I had a better daddy or a better mama, had things been different for me. He said, I'm going to wipe away every tear that you shed. Even when you felt like you were cheated, you felt like people got over on you. God said, I'm going to wipe away all those tears. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, I'm going to wipe away all those tears that I, and there shall be no more death. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There Thank shall you. be no more death. Mm. Neither sorrow. There shall be no more uh, 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 groaning and, and, and moaning and, and, and the, the, the death of our family members. You, know, you, you don't have to worry about it. I know we all now have to worry about people dying in our family and how we're going to deal with that certain day and people that have gone on to be with the Lord. He says, no, at that time your heart is not going to have to be heavy because there will be no more death. You're going to see grandmama and mama and all of them that were saved, that Amen. is. Amen. 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 Glory Amen. to God. And there will be no more tears. Amen. Amen. He said, there shall be no more death, neither sorrow. He said, no crying. Hey, God. He said, no crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. Hallelujah. Now that's a blessing right there. Amen. Those of us who got joint pains and body pains and aches and hallelujah. He said, there will be no more pain. Thank you, Lord. For the former things are passed away. Amen. Hallelujah. That's enough to say glory to God. He said, and, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He said, I'm going to make everything new. Hallelujah. Anybody glad about having something new? Glory. It'd be like, you know, when I was a child, I used to love the first day of the week because we had them new clothes, new socks, new underwear, new shirt, everything. You put it out on the bed and you look at it and you try to get it ready, try to get your weeks in. But I think all we had was four or five pairs and you had to mix and match the next week to try to act like you had some new clothes. Amen. But he said, I'm going to make everything new. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything is going to be new. Isn't that a blessing? Yes. He said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Amen. He said, These words are true. He told John, He said, Write, for these words are true. Yes. Do we believe the Bible Amen. tonight? Yes. He said, These words are true. That's the number one thing that you got to get down in your soul, your heart, and mind that the Bible is true. Yes. Hallelujah. If you can believe, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. Which means if you can see God right, no matter what you go through, God will assure you that he's going to work everything out right because his words are true. Yes. Somebody say his words are true. His words are true. You, you got to get that down in your spirit. His words, his words are, are true. true. Glory to God. I don't care what you're going through, but his words are true and faithful. Yes. And faithful. Verse 6 says, and he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha, watch this, and Omega. 
In the Greek, the alpha means I am beginning. Omega means end. The beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is at thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Now look at this. Even in this revelation, he says, I will give unto them that are thirsty. Uh -huh. People that are not just thirsty, but thirsty after what? He says, the water of life. Yes. He says, I will give unto them the fountain of the water of life. That means I am chasing after life, and to find life is to find God, because the Bible says, in him is life, and the life was the light of man, and light shineth in darkness. So to chase after God means I'm chasing after life and true life is in God. Amen. There are so many people that are out there trying to find the right thing in the wrong sources. Amen. They're trying to find a fulfillment in the things of the world. That's right. And so they wonder why they're never satisfied. Uh -huh. And they have got themselves in a, a well of addiction. Uh -huh. And now even when they don't want it, they have to do it. Come on. Because they have desired something outside of the wisdom of God. Amen. That's what happens with alcohol and substance abuse and cigarettes and those things, those things will trap you because they didn't come from God. And they trap you into a web of sin to, to and when you get to a place in your life that you can't, when you want to get rid of it, you can't. Uh -huh. Amen. So he says, he says, but for them that will be thirsty means your salvation you have to hunger. You have to have a thirst. You have to have ambition. You have to go after God with all of your might. That's why you can't sit back and say, well, I'm just glad to be saved. No, there ought to be something that God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 He says a thirst, which means an action word. Hallelujah. I'm going after God because I want God to get glory yes. out of my life. Amen. I know so many believers that they say they're saved, but you wouldn't know it unless they told you. Yeah. They're right. sitting in a conversation, you still wouldn't see their light, but they say they're saved. Yes, right. Hallelujah. Yes. But he said, Bill, Jesus said, blessed, in Matthew chapter 5, blessed is the man that hunger and thirst for righteousness, yeah. right? He said, if you hunger and thirst, he says, you shall have it. You'll get filled. You Amen. shall be filled. Amen. The Lord says, in this last day, he said, I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Mm -hmm. Look at that. God said, I'm going to give it to you. And then verse 7, he says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Which tells you that our Christianity is oppressed. Yes. Uh -huh. Our walk with God is oppressed. Yes. Uh -huh. Our walk with God, we have to go through afflictions because he said, He that overcome. Uh -huh. In other words, there's some stuff you will have to overcome. Amen. 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 There's some stuff that you have to you press your way to Amen. church. Hallelujah. You, you, you got to press your way to prayer. You got to press your way. Sometimes it is a prayer. Yes. Sometimes you got to roll out of bed. Yes. Sometimes you got to do those things that your flesh don't want Amen. to. Hallelujah. But because we're trying to strive after righteousness in a decaying body. Yes. That's why Paul said we groan in this old body. Hallelujah. No matter how much we want God, this body still constricts us to a death. And that's why the Bible says you got to put it up under subjection. You got to put it, you got to command this body. You will not win. That's why fasting is good because you tell your body what to do. No, I'm not eating until this time. I don't care what kind of biscuit commercials I hear. I don't care what kind of blueberry muffins I smell. And I said that because I smell some blueberry muffins today, and I was like, uh, we were on our bag, and I said, Lord Jesus. But, but, but no matter what, you got to put your body up under subjection. Yes. He says, he that overcoming shall inherit all things. And he says, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. Now, look at that. God takes possession. Of us. He says, I will be his God and he shall be my son. He, God takes possession of us. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And then he says in verse 8, but this is why I do not take possession of. Let's look at it. Verse 8 says, But the fearful, hallelujah, and unbelieving, 
and the abominable uh -huh. and the murderer. So let's deal with the fearful. The fearful are the ones Come that on. you say you are a believer, uh -huh. but you are ashamed, hallelujah, to express your faith. Amen. The fearful are the ones that are walking in that spirit of fear. Uh -huh. The Bible says, if you be ashamed of me, then I'll be ashamed of you. Amen. Hallelujah. So walking in fear that, that you got too much pride to give God credit. I, I, you know, I do my own thing. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting my life together. Yeah. It's so funny when you hear guys talk like that or women talk oh, yeah. like that. You know, I ain't perfect. I know I ain't doing everything right, but I'm trying to get myself together. You are walking in fear because God calls us to walk in faith and in confidence and in boldness. And when you don't want to stop doing what you're doing, then you start walking in fear. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, that's a different type of fear. A fear of not giving God your all. Amen. A fear of not selling out. Amen. I feel like I may miss out on something in life. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't sell out, there are people now in their 50s and, and 60s still talking about, well, I'm going to get it right one day. And, uh -huh. and all of this. So you're walking in fear because you're scared you're going to miss something. Uh -huh. You're going to miss drinking at the family reunion. Uh -huh. You're going to miss a socializing with your friends for a moment. And you don't want to walk in faith. You're walking in fear. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, says the Lord, there are some young men out there that are walking in fear because they feel like that they're going to miss something. Yes. But God says, I'm going to reward them that walk in faith. Amen. He said, these people that are fearful, Jesus. unbelieving, mm -hmm. and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and adulterers, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and what? Brimstone, which is in the second death. Hallelujah. Which means we all know that we're going to die first death and we don't get wrapped up. But then he said in the second death, which is after Satan has his tribulation period and we're all judged. He said in the second death. That, that is the time where we're going, those that are not saved and unbelievers are going to depart from God. Amen. Jesus. And that's why at this time, you better get yourself right. Yes. Amen. Yes. Get your soul right with God. Take this opportunity to get serious, hallelujah, about the Lord. We have to be ready for when this time comes. We don't want to be left behind, but we want to say, God, I have been faithful. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. He said, these, they were the part in the lake of fire and brimstone, which is the second death. People out there that are going after abominable things. Looking, they're delving into witchcraft and sorcery and trying to get somebody to read their palm and, 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 and psychics and all. He said, all of these are going in the lake of fire. Uh -huh. The lake of fire. Hallelujah. So let's, let's go back to our topic. I just want to show you the, the goodness that is for the believer, but then I showed you what is headed, the damnation that's headed for the unbeliever. So John, I want you to turn back to Titus, but just write this verse down. John chapter 3 and verse 18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say already. Already. And we know that because I already told you from the beginning of time, because of the sin of man mm -hmm. and because that reigns upon the world, that we are in condemnation, those that don't believe in Jesus. But Jesus said in response to that, in the last part of this verse, he said, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten son. So them that don't believe, he says, you are condemned already. Amen. Hallelujah. But Jesus came and he took away our punishment by his what? His sacrifice. He took away our debt by his deity. He took away our he took away and helped us escape the wrath of God by justifying us through his blood. Amen. That's what Paul says in Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. When you're out there witnessing, you ought to tell them that, yeah, we all have 
sin. We all have fallen short of the glory. The wages of sin are death. Yes, we have all done some stuff wrong. And if you don't give your life to Christ, you are falling up under condemnation. But Jesus came. If you accept him today, that there will be no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And you can tell them that's the good news. That, that if you give your life to the Lord today, there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Condemnation. This word in the Greek, it means, if you're writing, that the believer is not doomed and this believer is not hopeless. Amen. But he is free from the penalty and condemnation of sin. Oh, yeah. He is not judged as a sinner, mm -hmm. Brother Gene. He's delivered from the condemnation of death and hell. Isn't that good news? Yes. The believer is saved, but the believer is also guilty. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. The believer is also guilty. Everybody in here tonight, no matter how good we look and how much we smile, we've been guilty of some stuff. Amen. Oh, yeah, true. Amen. He said, he is guilty, but what makes him not guilty is not anything that he has done. Amen. It's the blood of Jesus who is not guilty. Uh -huh. So he took his innocent and poured it on us so that when God looks at him or looks at us, he sees him. Amen. Hallelujah. He doesn't see. It's almost as though when a judge comes to court and when, when the, the two, the, uh, the, the defendants, they come and they are standing before the judge and Satan says, look at all the things that he's done in his life. I got a resume. Remember when he lied? He cheated. You remember when he was in the seventh grade? He threw spitballs at the teacher. All that stuff. They did all throughout history. He said, look at all this guilt. He's guilty. But because God's blood, Jesus' blood is on the documents, God says, all I see is righteousness. Hey, glory! Isn't that good news? Yes. All I see is righteousness. Mm. So judgment is coming to us all. Yes. Sister Joanne, it's coming to us all. The question is, what will God see when he looks at your stain? Yes. For we all have stains. We all are guilty. But what will God do? Can you imagine if you, you never give your life to the Lord and, and there is no atonement for your sin? All your whole life has all these labels of sin and iniquities on them. And then when you accept Christ, he just comes and covers them with his blood for all your trespasses and all your sin and all the things that you've done. So at the end of the day, what you want God to see is Jesus' blood on you. That's why we accept him. Amen. But we want God to see the saints of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sin? But the Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Blood. Yes. So we dealt with condemnation. Now let's deal with justification. Mm -hmm. If you're writing. Justification. I'm going to ask this question again now. Some of y'all ain't writing. I'm say, what's the, All right, justification. So justification, to count someone righteous. So justification. It means to count someone right. It means to reckon or to credit someone as righteous. It's not that you are righteous, but it's been put on your account and credited as righteous. That's why God said he called or he counted Abraham as righteous. Right. Even though Abraham was not perfect, he counted him as righteous. Somebody say righteous. 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 All Greek verbs went in and the O-U-N means not to make someone something, but merely to count, to judge, to treat someone as something. And what that means is the Greek word for justification is di dikion, which is spelled D-I-A-K-I-O-U-N. And it says all the O-U-N means to make someone something, but merely to count, to judge, to treat someone as something. So it's not to make someone something, but to count, to judge, to treat someone as something. Amen? Amen. So you're, you're treated as, you're not counted, but you're treated as righteous, even though you're not righteous. That's what justification is, is that God turned away, the, God turned by his blood, turned away the wrath of God. Amen. 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 Because of Jesus' blood. So justification is necessary because of the anger and the wrath of God. Amen. 
God is angry with the wicked every day. Somebody write down Psalm 7 and 11. It says, God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of our hostility, because of our sin, because of our issues, because of our unrighteousness, because of our ungodliness. God, he judges us because God is angry with the sin. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anybody glad to be justified yet? Glory. Anybody glad that there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Glory. Jesus? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So look, let's look at Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. But I still got about 20 minutes. The Bible says, but after that kindness, after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. The Bible says, after the kindness and love of God. What is kindness? Kindness is also translated as goodness. It means God's good, his graciousness, his kindness. His, it, it, it's so deep within God that it is of his very nature. So kindness is the very nature of God that he extends to every believer. It is not that we deserve it, but God extends it to us. Somebody say, God extends it to us. God extends it to us. Jeremiah 31 and 3 says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, and he has drawn me with what? His everlasting love. Therefore, he says, Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. He says, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, and therefore with love and kindness have I drawn thee. God says, I have drawn thee with my love and kindness. You didn't deserve it, but I drew you. Right. When you were tired, God says, I was drawing you. I was giving you dreams and visions about living saved, and I was drawing you. And you can help when you got into a mess. You felt like coming to the church and coming to the house of the Lord and lifting up your arms because God was drawing you. Amen. Anybody ever been drawn? Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I know for most of us, many of us, hallelujah, you, when you got saved, you weren't necessarily planning on getting saved. Man. Uh -uh. But he drew you. You came just for another service. Mm. Yeah. You had plans afterward, but something drew you. Yeah. Amen. Something compels you to lift up your hand. Something compels you to say, Lord, I surrender. Something compels you down on the inside. Somebody say it was the Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Ghost. That drew me. That drew me. Now, number two. Number two is love. He says in the text, he says, but after the kindness and what? Love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. Now this is verse four of Titus chapter three. Uh -huh. After the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. Hallelujah. Yes. So he says salvation comes from what? God's love. Yes. Amen. This means that God's love reached out toward man. Man. That God has a deep-seated affection for man and that he has showered his affection upon man by saving him. So God, he showered his love. God is love, but God is truth. Amen. You cannot have love without truth. Amen. I don't care how much a person say they love you, yes. if it ain't love, it's truth, then that's not love. Amen. Say, girl, I love you, then slap you inside your head. That ain't love. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Love and truth. If I love you, then I'm going to demonstrate. Jesus even said, if you love me, then you would obey me. There is an action that comes Amen. with your love. And God's action towards mankind was he extended his love in his only begotten son. Amen. Amen. This word love, here in Titus chapter 3, it means philanthropio. This means that God has reached out. Amen. Means that God has stretched out. It's the idea of compassion. God loves man so much that his affection and his compassion are stirred to save every man. Amen. But God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This God so loved was the greatest adoration. Amen. That he gave was the greatest generosity. Amen. His only begotten son was the greatest sacrifice. That whosoever believed it was the greatest opportunity. And him should not perish was God's greatest rescue. Mm -hmm. But have everlasting life was God's greatest promise. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
So God extended his love towards us. Yes, God. So common sense tells us if God extended his love towards us, common sense also tells us that we needed a Savior. Amen. Why? Yes. Because every day, each day, our body is decaying. Yes. So if we could save ourselves, we have to have somebody greater than ourselves to save us. Yes. We come in the world bald, wrinkled, and needing a diaper. <laughs> and some of us will be the world bald, wrinkled, and, and needing a diaper. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> So we know that we are aging. We're passing away. We're, 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 our bodies decay. You can feel it. Hallelujah. You ain't as sharp as you used to be. You can feel things going down the dirt. So that tells you that even when we die, even when we pass away, we are dying with these things in our body. We're dying. We can't control it. That means we had to have somebody greater than we are to save us. Amen. We had to have someone with power on the outside to penetrate this earth and give us power that we did not deserve, did not earn, but gave it to us because he loved us. Amen. He snatched us out of corruption. The Bible says we shall take off corruption and put on the incorruptible. Why? Because God had all power. He has a greater power. So even when you are explaining this truth to the world, you ought to explain to them if you could say yourself, then you would be God. But the very fact we can and we're going to the grave, we needed a power that's greater than ours. Amen. Somebody amen. say amen. amen. So it's not about our self-righteousness. It's not about anything that we can do. There had to be a savior for our soul because my soul could not save itself. Paul realized this in Romans chapter 7 and verse 24. He says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the, this body of death? Amen. Paul said, this is a body of death I'm dealing with. Right. I, I'm, I'm struggling in this body. And though I want to do right, he says, the law of my mind, the law is working against my members in my mind. He says, I'm striving to do right, but I got to struggle. It is coming from this old body. That's why Jesus had to come in the form of a body and give up his body so that we would one day have a glorified body. Amen. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. So we have to learn that this, uh, this, this purpose that God has given us is greater than our own ideas and desire. To be a believer, you got to step outside of your comfort and reach for those things that are divine. That's why Paul said in Colossians chapter 3, to set your affections on things above and not on things of this world. Why? Because when you set your affections on above, you have now kingdom minded and kingdom thinking that you are living not for your will, but for the will of God. My affection, my appetite, my desire is to please the Lord. That's what God is looking for. I have a desire to satisfy my God. Why? Because I owe it to him. Paul said, I labor the more. He says, I am who I am by the grace of God. Paul says, I labor because you don't understand where I came from and what I did and how I used to persecute the church and all the things that I've done. So Paul says, since I got saved, I labor the more. Why? Because it's by the grace of God that I am who I am. Some of us are in our right mind because of the grace of God. Some of us are in a healthy body because of the grace of God. So I am, I do what I do because of God's grace. Yes. Oh, thank you. Somebody say his grace. His grace. Now I want you to see this. The next thing this verse says is God's mercy. Mm -hmm. Salvation comes from God's mercy. Mm -hmm. Somebody say mercy. 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 This word means feelings of pity, mm -hmm. compassion, and kindness. God's mercy. It is a desire to succor or to tenderly draw unto oneself and to care, hallelujah, for another. But two things are essential, if I say essential, essential, essential in order to have mercy. What, what are those two things? You have to see a need and then you have to be able to meet a need, Amen. hallelujah. 
because I can't have mercy if only I, if I can only just see the need. I cannot demonstrate mercy if all I can do is see the need. But mercy is given when I can see it and need it. Amen. Now, the question is, who could deliver us from this sentence of death? Who could deliver us from this curse? Only God could show mercy because he's the only one that could see it and do something about it. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's the Lord's mercy. Hallelujah. It's the Lord's mercy. His compassion fail not, for they are new every morning. You ought to say, Lord, thank you for your mercy. His mercy is the fact that he, had, he was the only one that had power to reach down and save me from my sins. Nobody else had that. Yeah. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Yes, thank you. Nobody but Jesus. Mercy is not mercy if I just look at you. Mm -hmm. If I just pass you by, but I have no power. God said, I looked at you with my mercy, and then he said, I gave it to you. Hallelujah, because I'm the only one that can meet the need. And he said, even when you start following me, I, I put grace and mercy behind you. Yeah. Hallelujah, that you would walk and talk and see somebody else with a need and begin to show them mercy. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Paul said that God will supply all of my needs. He said that because he said only Christ can do that. Only God can supply mercy. Yes, Amen. Somebody say mercy. Mercy. Oh, hallelujah. Time went by fast. All right, let's get to this word regeneration. Uh -huh. Regeneration in the Greek means, the Greek word is pelotonesia, which means to be regenerated or given new life. To be given a new birth, to be renewed or revived. Mm -hmm. To be spiritually reborn and converted. I've been regenerated. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, I've been regenerated. I've been regenerated. Salvation is a spiritual rebirth. Hallelujah. When we started this ministry, one of the, uh, the core messages of our ministry is when you come to God, you must be born a king. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. When you come to God, you must be born. Because nothing starts in your salvation wall, in your sanctification, in your purification, until you are born again. Amen. It begins by Amen. saying, Lord, cleanse me and wash me and sprinkle me from an evil heart. Amen. So we got to be washed. That we should, at the same time, spread this message. Again, I'm, I'm actually showing you how to use the scriptures to witness. Mm -hmm. Amen. A, another tool that you use, that you must be regenerated. When somebody comes to you and says, I'm struggling with being a trend, uh, with struggling being a homosexual. Somebody says, I'm coming to you and, I, and, and I'm struggling with, with fornication. I'm struggling with drinking. I'm struggling with, with, with smoking. I still want to. Well, you got to tell them that, hey, I understand you want to, but let's try to live safe first. I, I remember when a young lady came to me, hallelujah, and she came to me and said that she wanted to be saved, but she still had a desire for women. And I told her, I said, well, why don't you just try to live safe first right. without your appetite, Amen. without your cravings, because we're supposed to put our bodies up under subjection anyway. Amen. So you don't come to God saying, I have an appetite for a certain thing. You come to God trying to live saved, yes. live born again, yes. let God wash you, cleanse yes. you, and then turn you around. Amen. And then see how you feel after you've been turned around. Amen. Hallelujah. But you got to give your whole heart. Yes. You don't come with a duffel bag saying, God, I want to be saved, but I want to keep this too. You come with a surrender. Amen. Yes, Lord. So you got to live saved. And people tell you, I was born this way. That's great. We all were born this way. Uh -huh. But we all need to be born again. Amen. That's what regeneration is. I need to be born again. Amen. Hallelujah. No different from the pedophile, the murderer. Everybody needs to be born again. Amen. Instead of you trying to say, well, I have this desire. No, you need to be washed in the blood. You need to be cleansed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Titus 3 and 5. He says, regeneration. 
He says, mercy is saved us by the washing of regeneration. Uh -huh. What does that mean? We have to be washed. It's a new birth. It's a radical change. I'm changing from the old life to the new, which means I have to be bathed, immersed. Hallelujah. Salvation is a dramatic experience. It's just like being washed from your old life to your new life. I have to put off the old and put on the new. Amen. Amen. I know we don't like that, but we have to take it off. Yes. And we got to put it on. Amen. Paul told us in Ephesians 4 and 22, put off the old man, uh -huh. which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. Let's turn there real quickly. Put off the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and put on the new man. Hallelujah, which after God is created in righteousness. Look at it, verse 22. Let's look at verse 21 first. He says, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. He says that you put off concerning what? The former conversation. Yes. I know some people since they've been saved, they still got the same yes. conversation. Still got the, got the seed of bitterness and the seed of evil and envy and still talk the same way and claim they've been saved for 20 years but still got the same sour mouth they had 20 years ago. Come on. Amen. 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 He says, put on concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. He says, this is corrupt. This former conversation is a corrupt conversation. He says, according to what? Deceitful lust. That the lust will deceive you. It will have you out there doing something that you have vowed you will never do again. And he says, you got to put it off. You can't play with it. Because anytime you put off something, this is not a lay aside. This is not putting on the counter. No, you got to put that thing. You got to cast it out. You got to throw it away. You can't leave the door halfway cracked. You can't open up your, your Pandora, Pandora box with old phone numbers and all that stuff if you want to live saved for real. Amen. He says, put it off. And then do what? And be renewed. That's the next word we're going to deal with. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. He says, and be renewed. Renewed is to make new again in the spirit of your mind. Hallelujah. To make new means the evil thoughts of believers. You've got to make new. you got to refresh your mind daily. you got to meditate on the word of God day and night that you may be a tree by the rivers of living water. You have to be planted in God's word because God's word is the only thing that will anchor you in your time of affliction. That's why he said you have to overcome. You overcome by the word of God. Amen. You overcome by knowing and trusting in his word. What did God say concerning your situation? Every now and then I know frustration comes and we all get aggravated by certain things but you always got to go back to his word. What does his word say about what I'm dealing with right now? What does God's truth say with what I'm dealing with? Say amen. 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 So we have to put it off. The next word that we're dealing with is renewal. Hallelujah. And what does he say about renewal? He says in, in Titus 3 and 5, he says and renewing of what? The Holy Ghost. Y'all yes. see that? Grab it for me. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And renewing of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. I've already told you renew means to make new again. Uh -huh. To begin all over. To adjust again. Salvation is the Holy Spirit adjusting a person and renewing him all over yes. again. Yes. How does this make sense? From the beginning of time, I told you God's intention was to rule the earth from heaven through man. Mm -hmm. But man broke the covenant with God. When they broke the covenant with God, when they shattered the relationship with God, it also, hallelujah, altered the relationship between man and woman. 
God said, I was going to multiply the sorrow of a woman. Those of you who had children for the women, you know, God said, I'm going to multiply the sorrow and at conception with birth pains. And then he said, for the man, I'm going to make your environment rough. I'm going to cause thorns and thistles to come out of the ground. And you're going to have to work the ground. So when God had given us the ability to reach up and eat from the tree, God said, now you're going to have to bend your back and labor pain, work in the ground and till it. And it's going to be hard for you to be fruitful and multiply. This was the curse of the ground because of their sin. Amen. So why does that make sense? Because over time, as God loved his people, they still went back. God loved them, they would go back. God loved them, they would go back. Matter of fact, God says even in uh, around Malachi, he talked about the priests and the prophets. He said, y'all y'all might have been in Zechariah. He said, y'all might as well have been farmers because at this time, y'all so even y'all have turned the people away from me. You scattered my sheep and God was upset with mankind so he had to send down the perfect son. He had to send down the perfect savior to walk among us, to bare flesh and, and, and deity was mixed with humanity and he came to the earth to save us. Amen. Because God still loved us so much that he was sin. He sacrificed. The Bible says how be it that he would sacrifice his only son and not give us freely all things. Uh -huh. God gave his own son sacrifice for us. But God's intention was still to rule from heaven on the earth. Mm -hmm. How could he do that? Couldn't do that with Jesus here. Jesus had to die and reconcile us back to the father of what we destroyed in the first place. Amen. So when he reconciled us by his death, Jesus told the women, don't touch him yet. He has not ascended. Because when God ascended, and this is why he told the disciples, I have to go because for God to rule again through mankind, I've got to go so I can give you power that will communicate with me again. Amen. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. This is the purity that God had to give us so that he could communicate with us. God doesn't communicate with our flesh. He communicates in the spirit. Yes. That's why the Bible says, he that would worship him shall worship him in spirit and in his truth. So when God sent down the Holy Spirit, that's why he says, greater works you shall do. Why? Because Jesus was not just around us. Jesus was not living in us. So now when we pray, that's why the Holy Ghost said, I will understand even your murmuring in your groaning. Hallelujah. And he'll intercede for us. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is now living inside of us and understanding us and knowing our every concern. Yes. Yes. That's why Jesus knew it was better for him to go away. Yes. If I'm here, I can live with you. But if I go, I can live in you. Yes. Yes. That's the difference. I can walk and talk in you. Yes. And now you shall become my witnesses. That's why Peter stood up in Acts chapter 2 and began preaching the gospel because now the power was in him. Yeah. It was around him before, but now it was in him. And he could declare the goodness of the Lord. He could declare that Jesus, who you crucified, hallelujah, was the Savior of the whole world. Yeah. He could now declare it because now he had Jesus on the inside. Amen. So he says, renew. This is power that is renewing us day by day. The scripture says that he, in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and, and the one that we normally shout over is eyes have not seen. Now I've seen people shout and roll up under the pews, and ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the thing which God has in store for them that love him. Well, what does that scripture really say? Let's turn it real quick, and then we got to go. Hallelujah. We got a few minutes. This scripture, sister the Lord, verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it, it really doesn't mean, see, we look at this scripture as a result of we haven't seen the prosperity that God was going to give us. We think, oh, we had not seen the house that God was going to give us. We have not seen the car. We had not seen the glorious thing. But really what God was saying is, I haven't revealed it to your mortal bodies. I haven't revealed it to your eyes, and I haven't revealed it to your ears, which represent the physical body. He says, eyes have not seen, uh -huh. nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. It didn't even come into the heart of man. He says, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. He said, it hadn't even entered into your physical body. It hadn't entered into your physical heart. It hadn't entered into your mind. He says, it hadn't entered in. Why? Because he says, 
but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. He says, revelation does not come with your eyes in your ears. Revelation comes with the spirit that I've given you. Amen. He says, for the spirit does what? Searches all yes. things. Uh-huh. He get in there arresting us and begins to search all things. He searches your doubt. He searches your heart. He searches your mind. He searches you. But God has revealed it unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Then he says, for what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man? Which is in him. He says, only a man knows a man. He says, but even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. He says, but now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. He says, we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. And guess what? That we might do what? Know the things that are freely given to us of God. Amen. This is how we know what God's intentions are for us. This is how we know the plans of God. This is how we know the thoughts of God. It has nothing about being in the right place. It has everything to do with having the right spirit on the inside. Your revelation knowledge of, of of God and the things that God wants to reveal to you comes with your communing and you listening to the Holy Spirit that is within you. Amen. Amen. Because only the Spirit of God knows the Spirit of God. Amen. So when you're asking God to give you revelation, you're asking God to communicate to the Holy Spirit that's inside of you. Mm-hmm. That, that's why people people that are, are getting messages and it's not coming from God, they'll tell you something wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, some people come to town and tell you what's going to happen in three days and they're gone and it don't happen in three days. Well, that wasn't a message from God. That was a message from them to try to get you to empty your pockets. Yes. Amen. But revelation from God, this is when God reveals to you. Somebody say something to you that you know only God can know this about you. Mm-hmm. Only God. Somebody say amen. Amen. So this Holy Spirit is powerful. Mm-hmm. We got to close the Holy Spirit. But he says the renewing. He says and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. Let us say Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight. God, we give you honor and we give you glory. Mm-hmm. We give you praise. Yes. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Yes. We thank you for regeneration. Yes. We thank you that you gave us a new birth, a rebirth, oh God. We thank you that you washed us, God, in your blood. We thank you, God, that there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. We thank you, oh God, that you kept us, Lord. We thank you, God, that you reached down and God grabbed us with your love. We thank you, God, that you honored us, God. Thank you that you glorified us. Thank you that you called us. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. That you have justified us. Thank you, God, that we have access into this grace by faith. Thank you, God, that you opened up the door by your son Jesus dying on the cross. Thank you, God, for his blood, God, that we are not sufficient, but his blood makes us sufficient. Yes, God. And so, God, we give you honor tonight. We thank you, oh God, that we are regenerated. And I pray, God, that you would give us the courage, the wisdom, the knowledge, the boldness to go out and be soul winners for Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that you would give us that boldness, Lord, to make that decision to live for you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, to know that we don't have much time left, to know, God, that you are the God who sits on the throne. And when you decide to, you will come back to get us. But God, until then, I God ask you for strength, knowledge, wisdom. Help us to hear from you and to know what your will is for our life. God will give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 God, we thank you. God, we praise you. Yes, God. God, we honor you. Yes. God, we give you glory. Yes. God, we worship you. Yes. God, you are everything to us. Yes. We bless your holy name. Yes. We give you praise. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Glory. Give God a praise. Glory.
We're getting ready to raise the offering tonight, amen, before you go. Amen. We want to go ahead and worship the Lord and give it. Amen. We pray for those that are online. Amen. If you desire to be a blessing, man, you can see our, our cash app or regenerationtemple.com. Cash app is dollar sign region temple. Amen. We pray that the word of God has blessed you tremendously as we are here tonight celebrating and worshiping our King and our Lord. Amen. 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 You can come out to your seats where you are and give tonight. Hallelujah. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Amen. Amen.